Hi everyone, you are welcome to Dementia 10 and that will be Frontal Temporal Dementia FTD Frontal Temporal Dementia Frontal Temporal Dementia or FTD for short is also called Pig's Disease so it's either you hear the word Pig's Disease or Frontal Temporal Dementia or FTD it is one of the causes of dementia in people less than 65 years old and about 3 to 15 people will be affected out of 100,000 people between ages 45 to 65. The onset could be from as early as 20 years old or could be as late as 80 years old but the common age range is 45 to 65. It is slightly more in males, just a little bit. There will likely be positive family history and it's going to be autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. In other words, once the gene causing this problem is inherited, it is going to manifest phenotypically associated with damage in frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. There is possibility of unilateral frontal or temporal atrophy and you can have genetic testing done when you have family history to have genetic testing done. The clinical features will involve positive per momentum reflex. A permanental reflex is just that when the palm is scratched, you know, or you make a mark, a straight mark on the palm, you're going to check the chain, that the movement of the chain. That is permanental reflex. That is normal in infants, but it is abnormal in adults. So if you are suspecting frontotemporal dementia, you can just do that. Type of scratch the palm and look at the chin at the same time. If there is reflex or movement of the chin, that is positive permanental reflex and it's not expected to be found in others. It should be inhibited in others. Behavioral changes or deficit will be seen. Neglect of social responsibility is going to be profound here because there will be a possibility of loss of manners. I'm sorry to say this, but that is just the way it is. Loss of manners, disinhibition, and loss of judgment. The affected people here should not be blamed for anything. It's none of their fault. You know, the frontal lobe is affected. The temporal lobe is also affected. Speech will be affected. And behavioral variant from the temporal dementia could be paid here. And non fluent primary progressive aphasia could be seen with semantic variant primary progressive aphasia. The onset could be early and as early as 20 years old, and could be late as well as late as 80 years old. Behavioral variant frontal temporal dementia is the most common variant. And with that, you are going to have this inhibition, apathy, loss of empathy, apaurality, which means they are going to be putting many things that are not expected to be put in the mouth into the mouth. Just pick anything and put it in the mouth. Apaurality. And it is characteristic of frontal temporal dementia. Compulsive behaviors. But surprisingly, they're still gonna have good executive function, but they will be having episodic memory at the onset. With primary progressive aphasia, that is gonna be early and there will be language impairment. There's possibility of functional impairment here. The treatment here is that some believe that there should be no treatment at all. When you go through many literature on dementia, and particularly frontotemporal dementia, they're going to 
tell you in some of the books that there's no need of treatment. But you can embark on non-pharmacological interventions and which are supervision, a beatable home for them, psychotherapy for patients and caregivers, because they are going to face with a lot of stress. Exercise, behavioral therapy, and when necessary, medication can be used, but at a very low dose. Trazodone will be helpful to you know, sedate them if they need to sleep. Selective serotonin reuptake in beta, like cystalopram, seroquel at the very low dosage and as a last option. Still on treatment, please, no anticholinesterases here. No rivastigmine, galantamine, or odonepeze. They are too sensitive to antipsychotics like her dog, and that should not be given. That is why I said just a while ago that you can use quetiapine, which is zero required, but at very low dosage, and as a last result. In conclusion, nothing can be compared to accurate diagnosis because now you know what frontotemporal dementia is all about and you know you can do little as far as pharmacological interventions will be concerned. So psychotherapy is the hallmark of treatment here. And my heart goes out to the family members and even the health care givers that will be supporting these wonderful people. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe so that you can get this even though they are published. Thanks.